everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you to everyone at home for joining us. We're blown away by the incredible response to this event. Um, and I'm just going to babble for a few minutes while we let a few more people at home log in and join us. Um, we're particularly excited this evening because we're not only joined by Bruce Marks, who is our studio manager, been working here for how long? 20 years. 20, <laughs> 20 years. Nearly. It's incredible. Um, and he's going to, I'll hand over and he'll, ex Bruce will explain what he's going to be making this evening. But we're also joined by live a cappella group in the smoke. Uh, we've got six wonderful singers. So for, the, for those of you at home, I hope that you'll be able to hear us, well, hear them. Um, apologies if the sound isn't crystal clear. Um, as I say, at all of these Zoom events, you know, we're not the BBC, we're, we're doing our best as a, as a gallery um, to sort of bring you these events to those of you guys at home. Um, my colleague James is uh, going to send you guys a link at home to the catalogue for our Christmas exhibition, which is really what this whole night is about. Um, we've got a wonderful show on for you in the gallery. We are open Tuesdays to Saturdays. Please do come along and, and see the work and um, or have a, have a look online. Um, so if I hand over to Bruce, we'll hear about what we're going to okay, be so making tonight. Tonight we're going to do some Christmas. We're going to make a Christmas-based piece. Not don't really want to tell you what it is yet. It's going to be, can you tell what it is, one of those? Um, so we're going to start, I'm going to start to gather the glass. And while I'm doing that, we're going to have In the Smoke singing. So I won't be doing much talking at that time. Um, but then when, when they finish singing, I'll take over and I'll explain what I'm doing along the way. Uh, if, if you have any questions, feel free. And uh, you can shout out what you think I'm making when I get close. And uh, we'll take it from there. So I think... With that, over to In The Smoke. And I'll start to gather the glass. tell how hot it is. <laughs>
Blue draws. Yeah. Very dust. Amber chips, I need to turn sideways and then we'll do I'll, I'll do it. I'm going to chat about it. So.
I'm going to do a drop into the bucket. I'm going to do a gather and a drop into the bucket. But over wow. to me. Thank you. That was incredible. Absolutely wonderful. Um, okay. We would like to hear a little bit from Bruce now. Yeah. And hear a bit about what, what you're making. Let's give it a heat to this. So I thought we're going to do a Christmas food based piece. And I've always thought that glass is very similar to cooking, to being in the kitchen with a, you always need a recipe, you need ingredients. You need to apply the ingredients in a certain way. Um, so I've got my ingredients over here. Um, is that okay? I've got some colored glass over here, all in different sizes. We've got some big chips. <clears throat> Those are going to be my raisins. Got some colored powdered glass as well. We're going to apply all these in, in uh, in a certain recipe to make our food based object. So I'm just sprinkling some flour onto the cutting board. As you saw earlier, I used some uh, bicarbonate of soda, which is what you always use in cooking. And that's what gave us all those bubbles. So now I'm going to apply some raisins. I need a bit more of that. Any questions so far? Anyone falling asleep yet from the nice heat? The glowing furnace. Uh, this probably weighs six or seven kilos. 
but on the end of an iron, it feels more like 15 or 20 kilos. Uh, the furnace is 1,100 degrees centigrade. That's the furnace, the box. This one's about 1,200, just a little bit hotter so that the glass melts quicker. So every time I'm reheating it, I'm melting the glass in. This glass sets very quickly when it's hot. So we have to keep applying heat to keep it soft and moving and to get it sticky so I can apply the colors which is what I'm doing right now. Put one more layer of raisins. Uh, this is a very unusual color. It's actually an amber. But as soon as you heat it up, it goes, it goes, it disappears. And then it reappears and then it disappears. So you never really know what you're going to get while you're working with it. There's a few colors like that. It makes our life a bit tricky when we're trying to design because you can't really see what you're doing. It's all a bit of guesswork in the beginning. So next I'm going to add some currants and maybe a bit of chopped up cherry, which I've got here on the table. Uh, it may do a little bit, but also with all the rolling on the table, I'm probably pushing some of the air out of the piece. So we just have to keep topping it up every now and then. Okay, so I've got the bases for my pudding. We're going to need to start decorating now. Ah, gave away a little bit of the... Anyone guess what it is yet? I don't know what type of pudding. It might be sticky toffee. I'm going to blow it up a bit and then I'm going to get you to start gathering. Okay. Start to the white. It's all a bit misshapen at the moment. We just need to smooth it over, get it back into a nice round shape, blow it up a little bit more. You don't realize how much you use the color of the glass when you're working during the day because at the moment it looks incredibly hot to me, but it isn't. <laughs> it's very, uh, I need to heat it up some more. You'll see as I inflate the glass, it'll start to get bigger. Those blobs of color will start to stretch. Steady. Blow it up a little bit now. The line I'm making now is where the piece is going to get broken off the blowing iron. It's called the jack line. Have you ever heard of jacking it in? I think that's where it comes from. Uh, Bruce, we've got a question from someone at home. Yeah. Um, that pad that you're using right now, what, what is that made of? Uh, the Metro. Newspaper. The Metro. The metro. It's literally <laughs> wet newspaper. That's why all the little flakes are burning off as you can see there. 
I've also got a, a carbon pad, but it has newspaper inside it, uh, which I use sometimes to stop the newspaper sticking to the color. All right, Harry. Where are you? Uh, don't even know what it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is my assistant, Harry. She's going to bring some ingredients to top the food based object with. I would have used the, maybe use the big iron. No, use the big iron. So just chuck it. It's fine. Just use a put iron. I mean a punty iron. So Harry's going to gather some glass and apply some of the uh, glass color we have on the table there. And then we're going to cut that off onto this piece. What I'm doing now is just spot heating the glass. I want a bit more heat down the bottom. So I'm just giving it a spot heat. Not gonna fit. He's gonna warm up now. That's good, Eric. Any guesses yet? Panna cotta, maybe? Yay. How many Christmas based desserts can you think of? Keep shaping that up. I'm not quite ready yet for it, okay? You can roll it on the mob, but don't worry about the chips. Okay, so Harry's going to get that piece nice and hot. Just going to bring it over and we're going to cut it onto this piece. So I can find my shears.
Maybe one more mark, okay? Okay, that should be good. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Whoops. Stand up here. Obviously, glass blowing is a very team orientated sport. We really need help. We wouldn't be able to do this type of thing without our trusty helpers, assistants, Santa's little helpers. Any clues yet? Hmm? All right, so we're gonna have some more singing while I play around a bit. I'm gonna keep adding ingredients. And then when the sing is finished, we'll reveal a big reveal. Let's some water.
the ones you can just stay here and just keep it out and play. So Harry, one flash and then back to the bench. Cheers. Wait a sec, wait, wait. You'll be doing the leaves, right? No, it's a small bit on two. Two. I won't gather. Two different bits, one gather.
Let's do this. Done. Okay. All right, back to me. Any guesses yet? Um, bring the leaf presses. You come turn and I'll go get them. I forgot my whisk. My tweezers. Cheers, Luke. Okay, any questions so far? We're going to be putting the finishing touches on now and uh, finish with a flourish. Hopefully. No, that's fine. I can't see the heat. Bring it. Straight up. Straight up. It's fine. Start again, please. Another one. So one last ingredient, and then we're finished. Everyone's still okay. No one's overheating. We do have a question from someone at home. Yeah. Uh, they were just asking a question to do with the glass, and yeah. I mean, has has the can the glass ever overheat and get too hot? And if so, what happens? If the glass overheats, it'll literally run like honey um, onto the floor. So we try and avoid that. Speak a bit louder, sorry. Uh, you have to think about everything at the same time. Which makes... <laughs> so the people at home... You have to think about the heat is very important. So when you're blowing, it's really important to know where the heat is, what's getting too cold, what's too hot, or can I apply the heat in a specific way? as to make it easier for me to work. So that is quite important. For people at home, a, a lady, guest in the audience just asked what, how many decorative okay. can be added to the, uh, to the main piece. Right, so, shape. I'm sure you've all guessed what it is by now. Can everyone see it? Right. We're going to do a little bit something extra special. 
Don't panic, you'll all be fine. Don't make any sudden movements. So just gonna give it a couple of heats and then we'll do this. I'm gonna give it to you to knock off, okay? So sh sh sh. I'll grab it, stick it on the tray. Can you get the brand new ready for you too? Uh, yeah. Um, gonna have to keep it as close to here as possible. So we're gonna serve up some Christmas pudding for you on the platter. Yeah, that's probably good. Is there a blade now somewhere? Just use the, the tweezers. There's the tweezers. Just evening out the heat. I have the bottle and the torch. Okay, is everyone ready to be served? Okay, Harry. You take a seat, I'll flash. Just lots of water over there. Yeah. Need the torch on this side, actually. Bring the torch here, please. Yeah. Pull up a chair. Gloves are. So I'm going to put on some fireproof gloves. Like I said, please don't panic. The fire exits are that way. <laughs> okay. Like every, every Christmas pudding ever served, well, most Christmas puddings, we're going to top it with a lovely topping. Okay. That's good. Ready? Let's go. More water. I'm going to stand here just to be sure. Loads of water. Loads. Use this when you knock it off. The pudding's being a bit sticky. Okay. There we go. Ready, Tony? The topping. Cheers. Anyone wants a slice? That's incredible. That's amazing. So it's just wonderful to watch you create this. Thank you. From nothing. When, when did you first have the idea to make this for us tonight? We had it over lunch a couple of days ago. We normally with the blowing by candlelight, we'll make a platter or something and then pour whiskey all over it. And I thought, well, this is a lot more Chris Christmassy and um, seems to have worked. Sip for me. Are there any questions from the audience? How, how many times? Once. Is this, how many <laughs> so times here's one times we made times earlier. This is the one. Pass it around if you want. Pass it around if you want. Or you all got glass. Okay, don't worry. I'll hold it. So this is the practice one we made yesterday, two days ago. 
we didn't set this one alight because it's going to all crack and break. Thing with glass is you have to anneal it. You have to put it in the kiln to cool down slowly. Um, I'm surprised this one hasn't exploded yet, but <laughs> any minute now. Maybe you need to add more brandy. And um, yeah, so let's try one more. Might as well finish it off. Sorry? No. All that hard work for nothing. <laughs> for your enjoyment, shall yeah. I say. For your viewing pleasure. For your viewing pleasure. Oh, well, thank you so much to Bruce. Thank you. And.